Welcome in. Let's try to define thermal energy in this video. So I will go over a few items. Um, so one of the items, as you can see there on the screen, is going to be our first item of discussion, which is kind of the, the feeling. So what we feel as warmth and coldness. And what does that actually mean? So you have to take a step back uh, and kind of break things down into a much smaller kind of a, a level for yourself and think about that we are made up of atoms and molecules and so is other items okay that might uh, carry matter in some way now these particular atoms and molecules are continuously vibrating so they're moving around and all of us are going to have these particular particles moving around and when we're touching an object, so if I am going to be touching this table or if I touch and I take out maybe a bottle of cold water from the fridge, then, then there is some sense of one item being able to kind of be in contact with another item. And I just want you to think about that contact for the moment. Now, because of the fact that you're feeling that maybe that that item is warmer, Okay. Or maybe you did take it out of the fridge and it's colder. So what does that mean? When it's warmer, it means that that particular item that it has, which has the molecules okay, and atoms or particles inside, simply vibrating at a faster rate than your actual hand particles that are in contact. So if you have those particular items and they're vibrating faster, it's going to give you a sense of warmness. Now, if the item is colder, what that means is that those particular particles are actually moving slower than the particles that you have within your hand. Now, it feels weird because you're looking at your hand and you say, ah, it's not really moving. But if you zoom in you know, fast enough, we are made up of you know, particles, so atoms, molecules, and so on. And those ones are continuously kind of vibrating back and forth, okay? So they're moving around. So that's the idea of warmth and coldness. We have a sensory feeling because we can sense, okay, if it's actually far away enough. If something is you know, moving on average more or less close to you, it's gonna be very hard for you to think if it's colder or warmer, meaning if it's moving faster than you are or moving kind of slower than you are. But if the difference is big enough, we do have that sense. You know, certainly if you touch a hot oven, okay, stove, you very quickly will move away because those particles okay, are moving extremely quickly in comparison to yours. Okay, and then they're going to maybe possibly create a burn because they are in contact okay, with you. So that's the idea of warmth and coldness. So now you have that. Now, as you move over, okay, so this concept of moving particles has been actually captured now for a little bit, and it's called kinetic molecular theory. So the word kinetic you have now seen before because, okay, kinematics, so anything to do with kind of motion, okay, or moving objects. Now, you have looked at it at a large scale, kind of at the external scale with, you know, possibly a person moving, car moving, stretchers moving, okay, so these objects. Now you want to be looking and zooming in into that particular object and you want to look at the particles and how are they moving. So that's why it's called molecular, okay? And it is a theory, okay, in between. And it is for solids, liquids, and gases. So solids, okay, will typically have these particular particles vibrating quite a bit, but, okay, as you may recall, so those atoms and molecules, if you zoom in close enough, you know, they're made up of numerous of these little items, okay, and then they're close enough, and whatever forces that are in there, okay, kind of are bounding them within, so as they're kind of going through, so these particular forces are keeping them intact, right, so they are moving around, okay, so every single one of these little guys, okay, right here, right here, right here, these are just kind of vibrating back and forth, back and forth, right? But it is a solid because of the fact that there are still kind of forces, sometimes we call them as bonds, that are actually still holding it and it's capable of having a particular structure. Now, if they move fast enough, right? So eventually, you know, maybe some of these particular bonds, okay, or these forces may slowly kind of drift away, okay, or break down, and then you come in into a liquid, form, 
and that's what you see liquids that these particular particles they still are relatively kind of still held close okay together but not as close in terms of the solids now they start rolling over each other and kind of moving around and it gives us this kind of a look okay that it's a liquid and we can kind of make it flow and fill up a container and so on because the bonds that are within it aren't really as strong but the little particles are still kind of moving around and then again if they you know move around fast enough eventually they may get to the gas kind of state that you have so you have a solid state a liquid state and a gas state and that particular gas just means that now these bonds really aren't that there that much and these particles are far enough that they're kind of just shifting around so if you would put them in they're certainly around us because we have oxygen so it's one of the molecules and there's obviously many others carbon dioxide and so on and these particular gases are also moving right and now the question is all right so this particular movement that you have well that particular movement okay goes back into this kinetic okay word and we want to be able to think about okay so how are these particles kind of moving around um, on this on the scale that they um, are in so from this sense of warmth and coldness hopefully you now have an idea or more or less what that may mean okay and now you have this kinetic kind of theory well now we can start thinking about this thermal energy and what that is all about so thermal energy as i've just kind of discussed for the moment you know i said kinetic so that means particles are kind of moving around so that's definitely a por portion okay of the thermal energy that any object is carrying so it's kind of has these vibrations in there you know they're kind of zooming around there okay and if they're strong enough they might keep a solid okay form but if they slowly start to break down maybe they'll go into a liquid form start flowing and if they you know break those down then they may go in gases and just kind of start scattering around all over but the other concept, okay, which is interesting, is that thermal energy doesn't just capture the motion of these. There are also kind of potential energy. And what I would want you to think about in terms of potential energy, because it's very difficult to think about this, but as, you, as I've just mentioned, there are some bonds that are kind of keeping these things so that they don't vibrate too far away from each other, right? So you have these two things and, you know, this magical bond is kind of, you know, still keeping it that it's not allowing it to escape, right? So now what is that magical thing? Well, you can think back of even gravitational potential energy, which was much, much on a bigger scale. Now, that bigger scale is a good example. Now, of course, maybe it's planets or any objects, right? So you're looking at a much, much bigger scale, not really particles per se. But you may recall that, you know, within those particular bigger scale of gravitational potential energy, well, we can always kind of figure out, okay, that potential energy. So let's say if you have an object, and let's say this is the surface, maybe towards the Earth, you knew that there was a force, okay, this gravitational force which was trying to bring it in and okay if this object was kind of sitting on something else and wasn't allowed to go through we would say well this has carried a certain amount of gravitational potential energy well these particles they're not really per se in terms of these particular okay surfaces that you have okay in distances away but that's exactly the potential we don't really call it gravitational Okay? We just typically say that it's the potential energy that is inside of these, right? So you have these things vibrating, but they also have this potential, right? Because there's these magical bonds that are kind of keeping them in there. And that's within those bonds, that's where the actual potential energy is stored. Just as the same, you know, if I would take this and I would remove this surface, okay, now I allow this to kind of come in. But in the particles, you know, if you break that bond, those kinetic energies, because they're kind of moving around, they're gonna, if you break the bond, then they're gonna start to move away from each other, okay? Possibly breaking it down and maybe getting to a different state like a liquid or a gas. And that's pretty cool, right? So thermal energy captures both. It captures both the kinetic, so that vibration, and then also that potential, which is kind of the holding on to those bonds that you have within these particles, right? That are kind of vibrating all over the place. And now what happens is, 
that one thing that you kind of can keep uh, informed okay, of yourself is that within these thermal energies, right? So those thermal energies can actually transfer, right? So they can transfer now, just as you can transfer energy. So for example, you know, if you're pushing a cart and you're making it accelerate, right? So you're transferring, you're doing work, and then that work being done on that car maybe transfers to the object because now it's moving and now it has a kinetic energy. Now it's a, that was mechanical energy, right? That it's moving around. Well, the same thing can happen here on the particle side where basically what happens is that, okay, the objects that are warmer, all right? So those are the ones that have a higher thermal energy, okay? Um, typically will transfer, okay, their energy to the ones that are colder, Okay? And that happens because of these bumpings that happen. You know, if you have one item and it's not vibrating as much, then this one comes along and it's vibrating a lot and it hits this one. Okay, So then this one starts to vibrate more and then this one's going to lose some of its thermal energy and this one's going to gain. And that's what we mean, that this one was warmer, it was kind of vibrating more, had some more energy within it. And this one wasn't vibrating as much and then as it kind of came in contact with the other one, then it starts, you know, to increase. So it's never vice versa. So something slower is never really going to speed up something that's faster. And I hope that that intuitively makes sense to you, right? So if something is slower, not going to make this one go even faster, right? So typically what happens is that's the ones that are warmer, the ones that are kind of vibrating more are going to transfer their thermal energy to the ones that are vibrating less and then they'll start to vibrate a little bit more until eventually they'll probably even out, right? So that's what happens. And that's why, you know, even if you have a liquid and you have, you know, one is cold and one is warm, you kind of mix them together and then they'll kind of become lukewarm, right? And then eventually you're like, oh, this is kind of feels the same. Well, that's because the energy has transferred from the warmer one to the colder one, all right? So that gives you a sense of what this thermal energy is. So it's the combination of things vibrating and then the potential within the bonds that are kind of trying to hold these things together. All right, at least that's the intuition. Now, within here, so what we do is we may want to be able to measure, right? So this kind of concept of thermal energy. So it's actually really hard for us to measure the thermal energy in itself because it contains that potential. And it's also very difficult um, to measure the individual kinetic energy of these particles. There's just so many. They're not all going to be kind of vibrating and moving around at the same pace. But what we can do, and this is what we do okay, in sciences and physics and so on, we do try to measure on average on average, within whatever substance, you know, maybe with a thermometer, okay, as you see there, you know, on average, we can kind of see um, how much of that kinetic energy does that object have. So some of them might be faster, some of them might be slower, but on average, we can figure that out. And that's exactly what temperature is. So temperature is a measure of the average kind of internal kinetic energy of these particles that are vibrating or kind of moving around or gases, because we certainly can measure the temperature of a gas as well. All right. Now, it does not capture, okay, as it says here, it does not capture, doesn't measure the potential energy portion of the thermal energy. And that's kind of important um, per se, because it means that, well, we can't really get into that potential energy as much, but we can certainly, with the measure okay, of temperature, and temperature now is a new quantity that you can utilize okay, to be able to measure this kinetic energy. Now, kinetic energy has something to do, if you recall, the units were um, joules, right, for standard units, SI units, or possibly calories or kilojoules. So now, okay, in temperature, because it doesn't measure the, the amount, the total amount, it measures the average. So it's not really in joules, okay? So we use uh, a different unit for these, and we certainly do utilize, okay, the, the, the tool of a thermometer, okay, to be able to measure these. So, you know, the thermometer, okay, is in contact. So if you put it in a liquid and typically in a gas, those are the most common ones that you have, okay, in terms 
of thermometers, then what happens is, you know, there's, so there's a glass there, okay? And then the actual, so if you're thinking of a, maybe a gas, so what's going to happen is that the external, so the gas, those particles are moving around there, okay? And then they're gonna hit the glass of the, the, the thermometer, okay? So that you have, and that particular, so if you would kind of envision this, so if you have, so let's say this is your thermometer kind of like this, you know, so this is the glass, kind of covering and inside of here, you know, you will have, okay, you know, so typically maybe mercury or something else, okay, and then it will kind of go up or down and then we can measure, so it's kind of, it's called calibrated, so we can kind of see, but what happens is these particles within here, so outside, so they're moving around, they're moving around, and they're going to be hitting, okay, the glass um, at a certain rate, so as they hit the glass, so these, okay, the particles within the glass, well, they're going to get kind of shifted over and whatever the energy that these guys have, they're going to start move these, these guys in the glass around and eventually they're going to transfer that energy to the actual maybe mercury inside of there. And then with that particular mercury, so then if it's, uh, you know, if those particles outside are moving fast enough, well, then they're going to make the mercury rise because now it's going to expand because these things are moving much faster. So they're going to take start to take up more space, right? So as they vibrate further away from each other, right? If they're close together, but if they start to vibrate further and further, well, then they take up more space. And that's kind of how a thermometer works. Now, what we have is we typically have three units, okay? that are associated with these uh, thermometers and then measurements of temperature, which is kind of that average kinetic energy. So we have Celsius, okay? So that's the first one. And this does come from a scientist, okay? So it's named after Celsius. And this measure is very convenient for us because it is kind of based on both the uh, boiling and freezing, okay? Points that we have, okay, within, okay, of water. Right, so that is kind of calibrated within. So, you know, zero Celsius, you know, 100 Celsius. So, as you may know, for water, so zero is kind of the, you know, the, the, the freezing and melting points, okay, that you have there. And then, you know, the 100 is going to be the boiling point or the condensation point, okay, so from, from a gas and can condensate. So, that's what you have um, with respect to the Celsius. So, it measures it with respect to that. Fahrenheit is actually a different unit that we carry. And that Fahrenheit is also to do with boiling and freezing points, okay? But it is with respect to kind of very saturated salty water, okay? So that's what you would have. And you can, you can look that up. I would encourage you to try to see. So Fahrenheit is still on freezing and boiling points, but it is more on water that's saturated. It's kind of salty water, right? So that's what we're referring to there. And Fahrenheit was another scientist. Now you can do the conversion between degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit, okay? Here I'm just showing you the formula. So you have it right here. So this is the Celsius and this is the Fahrenheit and it's a, it kind of looks like a semi-complicated formula. It's a linear formula. I, but I'll do some examples okay, in a different video. Maybe I'll put up a link up above there for the conversions for you. Now, the last one, Kelvin, this one is super neat. Okay, So this particular unit, and again, named after a scientist, and you can see here, okay, so that the degrees Celsius, how they're related to the degrees Kelvin. I'll also put a, up an example on that as well in that video. And what that means is it is actually trying to measure, okay, the average kind of thermal energy overall, which is interesting, um, but it is highly based on the kind of average kinetic energy. And what it says is kind of it, it is calibrated in such a state that, you know, at towards zero, it means that the object's particles are basically no longer vibrating, right? They'd have almost no kinetic energy at all. Okay, and but that zero happens. So if you plug in zero into the formula, you'll see that it's negative 273 approximately. It's about 273.15. Maybe they've gotten it closer now, but that's what it is. So 
it is at that negative 273 degrees Celsius, which as you know, is super cold, right? I mean, it's cold, you know, negative one is negative, is cold already for us. So imagine negative 273. And what it means is that basically nothing is kind of vibrating anymore at that point. Okay, and as you get higher and higher or further and further away from this negative 273 or in Kelvin, you know, from zero Kelvin, one Kelvin, two, three, so if you would say 273 Kelvin, that would be, okay, basically zero degrees Celsius. And there you have quite a bit of vibrations and it will depend on whichever kind of um, properties you have of whatever object you are studying. But that's the Kelvin scales. You have these three scales. You can convert between them, you know, by using the formulas that I have provided here. But that's what you would have, okay, within there. All right, so that's the introduction. The goal was so that you can understand what's warmth, okay, and what's coldness, right? Those feelings that we have, what do they mean in terms of particles moving around? So that's what I would want you to take out. Number two, I would want you to take out the concept of thermal energy, which is the kind of movement of and vibration of these particles within objects, plus the potential that's stored within their bonds that's kind of keeping them and making sure that they keep their kind of forms, both for um, solids and for liquids. Okay, Gases, really those things are broken. So it's, gases really just have that kinetic energy. Okay, so that's what you would have there. So that's what I would want you to know. So that's for thermal energy. And then lastly, for temperature, you should know that temperature is measuring the average, right? So it's the average kinetic energy of these vibrations. Some of them will be faster, some of them will be slower, a lot of them will be around that average. Okay, and that's what the temperature is trying to measure. And it doesn't really measure the potential energy but it does measure the average kinetic energy okay, of that thermal energy. And then therefore, so we do use um, our units, which is either Celsius, uh, Fahrenheit, which are both based on boiling points okay, and freezing points. Celsius is with regards to just water. Okay? Fahrenheit is with regards to salty water. Okay? So you can look that up, I encourage you. And then the last one is Kelvin, which does capture actually thermal energy and it's based on a scale. It's nothing to do with boiling or freezing. It is actually to do with the fact that are these molecules still vibrating or not. And as you kind of remove and they stop moving, that's basically kind of zero Kelvin and then it goes up. Okay, so it's, it does have a floor okay? and then it goes up from there in terms of the energies that they carry. And Kelvin is the SI unit. All right. Thanks for watching. Continue vibrating. Okay. We'll see you in a future video. Bye, everybody.